Beefcake number eight. Jesus and Elvis will be found in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. <laughs> you ever been to Gatlinburg? I have. When I, when I was a kid, we used to camp in a town called Townsend, Tennessee, in a campground called Tremont Campground. My parents would take us there uh, for two weeks every summer. And so I spent a lot of time growing up in that area. I had no idea. I absolutely, I absolutely had no idea that this place existed. Oh, what do you, you? This was the first time you'd gone there. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. That's crazy. It is crazy. It was completely crazy. My mind has been. My mind was blown. By the time we got to Pigeon Forge, I kept thinking, "Oh, this is Gatlinburg. Oh, this is Gatlinburg. Oh, this is Gatlinburg." And Amanda was like, "No, we're not even to Pigeon Forge." And then we'd get closer. I'd be like, holy yeah. mackerel, this is crazy. She's like, no, this is Pigeon Forge. I don't know how you grew up around here and never managed to make it to Gatlinburg. I don't either. I think I think that my parents said that they took me when I was like too young to remember. But I've never huh. seen anything like it. Oh, man. It's awesome. Uh, it is totally awesome. I, I think that every person in America should be required to visit there. <laughs> To make a pilgrimage there. And that's why when I said Jesus and Elvis will be found in Gatlinburg, it is because that is a Jesus and Elvis kind of place. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's true. I, I, I never heard anybody put it that way. But, <laughs> but yeah, I totally see what you mean. If they are still around or they never left, they're there. <laughs> and if they're coming back, they will be there. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. Do you like to play mini golf? Um. I don't, I don't, I don't mind it. I'm, it's not something that I seek out to go do. Well, you know, there's 1,900 places to play mini golf, right? In Gatlinburg, I, I was looking at these places and I was wondering, first of all, like, who's the next person? Like, who was the last person to say, "Honey, I'm going to start a mini golf," <laughs> <laughs> and then say, "Well, where are you going to do that?" I'm going to I'm going to start it right across the street from the other 258 <laughs> in um, Gatlinburg. Where else? <laughs> right. And then and then they say where are you going to find the the investors and and somebody is sitting in front of a group of investors and saying, "You know what? I want to build this mini golf course and the budget's going to be $20,000." <laughs> but I'm also going to put this big ass gorilla up there. Yeah, hold, but wait, hold on. Somebody. Listen to my unique value. <laughs> Listen to the unique value that I'm going to bring to this mini golf. This is my value proposition. Is <laughs> an airplane in a volcano. <laughs> we, we can't stop at the airplane. We have to put a volcano. And then the, somebody's like, "No, no, I'm putting a big ass chicken." That's All right, a, yeah, huge chicken. Okay, you need a million dollars. The chicken has to go. I'll, I'll invest, but not with the chicken. <laughs> What's the? I have to see the books of these places. Like the, the disproportionate amount of focus and and money that goes to the setup versus the golf is just it's mind numbing. <laughs> and then on top of that, I, I was looking even throw all the mini golf out the out the window, and how many t shirt shops. Can there be airbrush, airbrush, and just hats and just shit that says Gatlinburg? <laughs> <laughs> How much stuff can you possibly sell that says Gatlinburg? Well, obviously people buy it, right? I, I think so. I guess <laughs> that's why I want to see the books. But I love it. And I the, think that that is totally that is the essence of America. That you can do that. You you know if I if I want to start a t shirt shop by God, and there's ten of them. Across the street, I can still start that thing. Knock yourself out. Knock yourself out. Tattoo. Are there any tattoo artists? Yes. Yes, there are tattoo artists. And there's <laughs> tattooed people everywhere. And there's there's fat people and skinny people and black people and Asian people and white people and fat people with skinny people and, and vice versa. And Gatlinburg is the melting pot. Gatlinburg is the OG. <laughs> They are the original melting pot of melting pots. And I had no idea. And I feel like that the world has kept this from me for a reason. Do they still have the Ripley's Believe It or Not thing? Hell yeah. And we <laughs> went through it. <laughs> <laughs> we spent a lot of time in it. And I read everything on those walls. <laughs> That's so funny. 
they have that ball that weighs 13,000 pounds and it <laughs> spins by the weight of the water. Yeah. And there's like a, you know, one millionth of an inch, uh, thing of water up underneath it. So you're able to stop it with your bare hands and, and spin it around the other <laughs> way. And all I could think about is what's, what happens when some redneck pulls a pry bar out and rolls <laughs> that 13,000 pound ball and, and takes out every taffy like, and t-shirt store within, you know, one mile. Like strip. Indiana Jones running from the ball. That's what it would kind of be like. Only the redneck version. And and because of that, some redneck would jump in front of that ball and want to run from it. <laughs> and to have their picture taken. And have their picture <laughs> taken and pay for it because everything <laughs> takes your picture for $8. <laughs> there is nothing that you can't drop $8 on. You can't walk 20 feet without somebody needing you to spend $8. <laughs> <laughs> and and we gave a lot of people eight dollars because I'm into all that. I had to ride the lifts, and we did the Pine Derby cart, and we did a roller coaster that that you control the speed. And I got off of that thing, and I, I told some people, just some some guys that were watching us. They're like, "How was it?" And I said, "Man, I don't think I feel comfortable about being." you know, in charge of my own fate like that. <laughs> like, I don't think that I want the brakes because there's, there's not a whole lot separating me from the side of that mountain. Oh yeah. That would scare me. And I just, I, di I didn't even know they had that, uh, that kind of stuff. I, well, you got to take an $8 lift to get there. <laughs> I know they have snow, fake snow skiing. That's where, that's okay. where we rode up to. We, gotcha. we went up apparently where the snow is pumped in during snow season. And uh, during skiing season, and we rode a, a roller coaster that appeared to have been built by probably some really, some highly intelligent meth heads. <laughs> it was kind of a cross between like really uh, impressively put together based with the material, based on the material that you had to work with. And also like, there's just no way this thing's going to hold me. Up in the mountains like that, I bet, I bet that's like the Mecca for like, People that cook meth. Oh, it has to be. Yeah. Like, I mean, like moonshine, that's where, you know, <laughs> that's where the moonshine started. Yeah. And so then you throw meth into it and that's just, that's just another t-shirt shop. <laughs> <laughs> that's just upgrading. You know, that's the new product. Do you like uh, fair food? Um, I like the fair food that I like is, um, what is it? The funnel cakes. Well, go figure. Gatlinburg has funnel cakes. Yeah, they have to. Tons of them. They have funnel cakes. They have Italian sausage. They have corn dogs. They have everything fried. They have everything good. And if you don't like fair food, then they have sugar. Mm -hmm. they got sugar coming out the butt, man. Fudge. Fudge. That's one thing that I remember from being a kid. And we, I guess we never spent a whole lot of time in Gatlinburg. We were like outside of Gatlinburg and, you know, camping in the, in the, woods and stuff like that and that's one thing that i remember being huge like everywhere you go there's like homemade fudge and there's like a million different kinds everywhere and there's taffy and taffy taffy big ass vats of taffy uh-huh and if you don't like taffy or, or fudge but you still need to like mainline sugar they have just sugar right there on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> sugar on a stick. Sugar on a stick. Wow. Rock rock sugar is what they call it. Huh. I mean, that's really the name for it. Not like crack rock. It's it's called rock sugar. <laughs> this this doesn't sound like a healthy town. No, it it's not <laughs> it's not a healthy town. We did find uh we called it the mean hippie store. Um Amanda was kind enough to find a place that was serving the the kind of uh nutrition that I'm going after uh these days and it was like a juicing place it was a vegan place but the lady uh which I, don't even ask me how a vegan restaurant gets started right right in the outside of Gatlinburg but business probably wasn't too terribly good because Man. she was kind of mean <laughs> <laughs> like she wasn't selling the whole vegan way of life very well I was expecting like hey oh uh, so she wasn't there like pursuing a cause of Bringing health, healthy food to Gatlinburg. 
No, it, it it appeared more like she was mad at her parents for something and was doing it. And I'll show you. I'll yeah. open a vegan shop in the <laughs> middle of Gatlinburg. <laughs> and my customer service is going to be treating my customers <laughs> like shit. But we went back to see her a couple times, so it worked, I guess. <laughs> Are you more fair food or candy? Um, Candy. Candy. Yeah. It's like sweet tarts. If you were going to start a mini golf uh, store, would you rather have, and you had options here, you had options of, of what you could, would you rather have a big-ass gorilla, a big-ass chicken, or a full-scaled airplane crashing into no, the waterfall? No, I know exactly what I would do. If I were going to start a mini golf, it would be uh, internet meme themed. <laughs> <laughs> so I would have like that big gorilla Harambe or whatever his name is. <laughs> And then I would have like every other meme you can think of and, and every hole would be like a different one. You'd have like the work. overly attached girlfriend hole. <laughs> there's, there's no less chance of that working than there hasn't been any studies to disprove <laughs> that that would work. It would be awesome because then people would t have pictures to take. I would pay $8. Yeah. And it would give them a reason to post it on the internet. Would you would you have go karts behind it? I think you have to have go in order to get a permit to build a mini golf course. I think that you have to have go karts. Yeah, I would have go karts. It appeared that way. But even be, even if they were made in like 1960, you still have to have them. Yeah, I would do like the indoor racing race car ones. Have you seen those with black lights and stuff? Yeah, yeah. A Where, place to like really show off your stonewashed jeans. Yes. Because there's a lot of stonewashed stuff still going on in Gatlinburg. Well, I'll get that girl that runs the vegan shop to come over. And If it was good at some point in time in America, it's still going on in Gatlinburg. <laughs> it just <laughs> never changes. That's right. I mean, if you need some stonewashed, they got it. If you need tie-dye, they got it. Tight rolls, they got it. You know, bad perms, good perms. Um, <laughs> perms are alive and well in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Wow. So are jorts. There are jean shorts, more jean shorts per capita than anywhere else in the universe. So they're just stuck in time. They're stuck in time. And, and I think that they, they made a good choice. They stuck themselves right where they need to be. <laughs> I think it's perfect. I think Gatlinburg is perfect. I loved it. And I told Amanda, I said, I think I could stay here for months and, and, and not be any less amused than I am right now. <laughs> I mean, there just wasn't, uh, it, with every, with every day came a new fascination. Wow. This is beautiful. I'm going to have to make a trip to Gatlinburg. I am pro Gatlinburg. So I need you to know that. I need you to know that I support Gatlinburg and it's important to me that anybody who hasn't gone to Gatlinburg gets there. The world would be a better place if there's more Gatlinburg in it. But you weren't there just to be entertained, right? I was not there just to be entertained. You ran, I, ran I a race or something? I was there to be entertaining. And by entertaining, I mean I was, I was running. Yeah. You ran like two races. Yeah. We did a 5K on Friday night and a half marathon on Saturday. And so I, uh, I, text, I sent a text and I asked about the marathon, how how'd that marathon go. And uh, your wife, Amanda, wrote back and said, it was like your last half marathon ever. It was terrible or something to that effect. And yeah. I was like, oh, hey, she, I know what she said. She said, this is Wilson's last road marathon. And I was like, a road marathon? Who puts on a road marathon in the middle of like some of the most beautiful mountains you've ever been to? Like, That's what got me. I, I didn't know <laughs> what that was all about. And they said, oh, oh get this. They said that it was going to be a, a gradual, almost unnoticeable incline. Oh, that's of 700 feet. So there's only a 700 foot um, altitude change or elevation. Change. Okay. However, in between that gradual, almost unnoticeable <laughs> 700 foot climb is about 400 straight up and down hills, <laughs> which it's Gatlinburg. I mean, why would you expect anything else? Right. However, I expected something else. I mean, I would expect it to be hilly. I just did, I didn't ever expect you to go all that way to run 13 miles on the pavement yeah well um but we just got done one episode ago talking about my level of stupidity 
<laughs> and and I'm, I'm not affected by it at all. And it was actually <laughs> great. It was a great time, and I'll do more of them. I'll do whatever Amanda signs me up for, and yeah. that's what I, I love about even being around her is just – I just sit back and wait for the email confirmations to come in <laughs> that says, congratulations, thank you for signing up for, you know, Death Race 4000. Um, and I know I'll be doing it with Amanda, so. I That's awesome. I like that. All right. Well, before we uh, check out, I want to mention the uh, deadlift program. Yes, Boy, sir. Heavy Run Long that you were um, kind enough to put together. And, man, it's fantastic. It's a great program. If you're wanting to get into the 50 mile 400 deadlift club, or if you're a female, the 50 mile 300 deadlift club, then you need to check out Vaughn's Lift Heavy Run yeah. Long Deadlift Program. It's a three month program uh, that's that's interactive. It allows you to get some um, some education and have some contact with Vaughn, and he'll answer any questions. And, that's right. Uh, he'll get you to your goal. Yep. And if you're a runner that doesn't know how to incorporate lifting into your program, it work, it'll work great for you as well. Check it out.